up to this point, we've had a single variable with a single constraint on it. Now we're going to have n variables and n constraints. So we can think of n scalar functions numbered f1 to fn, and they're on n variables numbered x1 to xn, and these all equal zero simultaneously. Or we can just think of a vector equation of a vector variable. So here f would be a function that maps n variables to n variables. The Newton strategy remains the same. We're going to construct a linear model of the original function near our current point, and then we solve that model to get the next point. So that means we have to talk about linear approximations in n dimensions. This would be the vector analog of the start of a Taylor series expansion, where we're going to leave out all the terms at second order and higher. This term in the linear position here is an n by n matrix called the Jacobian matrix. The ij element of that matrix is the partial derivative of the ith function with respect to the jth variable. The Jacobian matrix is essentially the first derivative of a multivariate function. Like any derivative, it depends on x, unless the function is linear. You can look in the book at example 451 if you want to see a Jacobian matrix being computed for a particular example. So now we're ready to construct our linear model. We're going to ignore the higher order terms because we're going to stay close to the point, hopefully. Everything is centered at the current value xk. So the variable of the model is xk plus h, where h is the deviance from xk. So the linear model, which I'll call q, is just the first two terms of the series above. And then the next iteration is determined by setting q equal to 0. So we put those in, and we can solve for xk plus 1. This formula is the Newton iteration for a system of nonlinear equations. It's a generalization, or it reverts to the old formula we had in one dimension, because in one dimension the Jacobian matrix is just f prime at xk. Now you'll see in the Newton iteration that I have a matrix inverse. That's not what we do when we implement things. Let's think of that formula as being broken into two steps. So we write the new iteration as xk plus something new, sk. And that sk solves this linear system of equations. So at each step of Newton's method, we have an n by n linear system of equations to solve. Most of the other things that we did remain the same. Because we have vectors instead of single numbers, we have to use norms instead of absolute values when we talk about the sizes of things. But for the most part, it's very familiar. Here's a function that I have saved locally. So let's take a look at what this function actually does. It returns two things, and those two things are what MATLAB calls function handles. You could think of them as 
pointers to functions, things that you can use as functions, essentially. And the first one of those is called residual, the other is called Jacobian. And those are defined lower in the file. So normally, only this file could see the functions that are defined after the first one. But by passing out these handles, other things will be able to call these functions. So there are different ways of arranging this. You could put these in two separate files, for example. So here we have a system of three equations and three variables. So x is a assumed to be a vector of three variables and then f is going to be returned from this function as the value of the nonlinear system which also has three components. So here you see we're referencing the different components of x and the different components of f. And this is a lot more general than if we said x1 comma x2 comma x3 that would only work for systems of size 3 which is pretty limited. Similarly down here we've got the Jacobian function. So again that's a function of the point x or the value x and that's a matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix. So here's the first row of that matrix, the second row, and the third row. And you can verify that these come from the partial derivatives of these expressions. Okay, so in a nutshell, this function returns two functions that will return these values. So here I'm going to create handles to those functions that I want to use. And we're going to begin Newton's iteration. So here's our starting value, and we do want to make sure it's a column vector. And we evaluate our system function at x and we evaluate our Jacobian at x. So you see we're trying to make these 0, 0, 0, so we're not there. Um, and we're going to need this Jacobian matrix, right, which is sort of like the multi-dimensional form of the derivative. We're going to need that to find our next guess. All right, so here we solve for the Newton step, as it's often called. So it's minus the inverse of the Jacobian times f, or as we're doing it here, we're solving a system of equations, solving a linear system of equations. And then we add that step to x to update it. So we see we started at the origin, and now x has moved away. Now we evaluate the function there again. And you can see we're still not 0, 0, 0. In fact, it's actually gotten worse if you take the norm than where we started. That's not unusual in the early iterations, at least. So that says, well, we're going to have to continue. We're going to have to do this again. Find the Newton step, add it to x, and so on. So we're going to do that in a loop now. So I need to find the, the new Jacobian matrix at our current value of x, find the Newton step, add it to x, so update x, and evaluate the function again to see if we're done. And so here it's just printing out some information at each step and you can see that if you look at the exponents here for example the Newton steps which are good estimates of the actual error they eventually start doubling in the exponents right minus 2, minus 5, minus 10 machine precision. Same thing for the norms of the residuals here 10 to the minus 2, 5, 10, and then machine precision. All right, so the book has a function Newton sys that automates this process and does a better stopping criterion, among other things. And I'm going to rewrite the system function slightly to be used by the uh, Newton sys function. So here, instead of returning functions that calculate f and j, I'm just going to return the values of f and j themselves. So before, the function I had before was sort of one meta level higher, it was returning these two functions, but now this is the thing that given x computes a particular f and a, and a particular j. That's what the Newton sys function from the book wants. Okay, so we run Newton sys, starting at the origin again, and the number of columns in x tells us how many iterations it took.
actually it's only six iterations because the, if you don't count the the very first one which is in the back, which is in the output x all right so we'll take the last column of x as our best estimate for the root and you evaluate the norm of the function there or the norm of the residual which is the same thing as the backward error and you see that we solved a problem that's extremely close to the original and if I take the difference between all the previous iterations and the final iteration which was R then unless I changed the number format we'll just see zeros as these get smaller so these are errors going to zero now I could be fancy and take the norms at each column but to just make life easier let's just look at the first row of this if it converges overall then it has to converge in every row as well so if we do that we take the absolute value of that row and then we take the log we should get numbers that roughly double as we go to convergence, so minus 1, minus 2.3, minus 5.2, and so on.